Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing more of the new Battle Rush seasonal event, which is an alternate game mode in which we have just 8 seconds to take our turn and 15 seconds to choose our cards in between rounds. That means everything we do needs to be fast. Today we're using an archetype that we've never used in this event before, and it just got a bunch of support from the new Claw and Dagger expansion. So let's go take a look at the deck. So today we'll be playing a Monsters Rocket Swarm deck, which is the archetype that just got a bunch of support from the Cloud and Dagger expansion. Basically, the idea is that we are going to spawn a ton of little drones on our side of the board and do that quickly, so that then we can use cards that boost every single unit that we have on our side of the board to give us tons of additional value. And we have some new cards that are particularly good at doing that. So Rocket's Nest, a Spontaneous Evolution, those are great ways to very quickly get a bunch of cards on our side of the board, drones in particular. And then we can also use things like a Rocket's Behemoth to create even more of them and boost them up in the process. Indraga Queen. Generally, I like to consume the Arrakis Behemoth with the Indraga Queen because high provision cost means you get a bunch of drones from that. Once you've done things like that, you'll get a bunch of units on the board, even the recently reworked Eater, both good for damage and also spawning units on your side of the board. Of course, also with this leader ability, anytime you play an organic card, you'll get a new drone spawned on your side and you can use this to get five drones on your side of the board. So no shortage of ways to get the drones. Then once you have a bunch of drones, you can use cards like Yennefer Vangerberg in the range row, for a lot of boosts. Glusty Warp, assuming that your drones are still on one power for a big source of boosts. Use Bone Talisman, which because it's organic will spawn more drones, but also give them all boosts. Even Chimera, basically just load up on drones. Of course, the easiest card to get a bunch of copies of in a row and use this once you're on Adrenaline 5 to get those all boosted up. We have the new and improved cards to add to this deck from this expansion. Hive Mind, basically rather than spawning in a drone, you'll spawn in a bigger Kikimore bronze unit. And there are only four bronze Kikimores anyway, so it's just a matter of choosing what order they show up in, which is not a huge deal most of the time. But there are some new bronze Kikimores, including the Hatchling, which helps us spawn even more drones. One that I didn't actually include in our starting deck here because it's a little bit tough to make it work in this event. The Stalker. Basically, whenever you spawn stuff, you'll get a charge and you can either damage units that have lower power than you or consume on your row. And because we are spawning so many cards, yes, you might run out of board space. This is a way to still spawn in more things even when you're about to run out of space. It's also a way to deal damage if you don't have any concerns about running out of board space. But because charges are generally very difficult to use in this event, since you have so little time to take your turn. That's why I didn't put any in our starting deck, but you will eventually get one of these from Hive Mind. So just bear that in mind. Other new cards, Acid Spit, which basically means every time you spawn a unit on your side of the board, you will damage whatever enemy you target with this with the infusion that you are giving it. When it gets lowered down to one power, it will then spread that infusion to adjacent units. So you can eventually damage every unit on your opponent's side of the board down to one power because you're spawning so many stuffs. And you can trigger this multiple times per turn, which is pretty amazing because especially with our leader ability, we can spawn a ton of stuff in one turn if we'd like to. Does not destroy those units, just drops them down to one power, but that's where something like Glusty could be a really nice finisher for you. One thing to bear in mind is you want to be careful using Glusty because this relies on you and your opponent having one power cards, and because we have so many other things that can boost our one power cards, they're no longer on one power. So for the most part, I try when possible to play Glusty in a round in which I'm not focusing that much on boosting, more so on just spawning a bunch of stuff and maybe on control more generally acid spray, things like that. And then in the other round, I'm focusing more on boosting the units that I went wide with, with things like Bone Talisman and Yennefer. So just be a little cautious with the Glusty timing on that. Also, there is a recently we were Kikimore Queen, who now will trigger her Thrive whenever you play an organic card, which is another way to give you even more wide boosting. And again, another card in that case, to just be careful about playing in the same round as Glusty, because basically it means you can optimize for Glusty by keeping everything on one power, or optimize for the other things that can boost you up, and that way you don't have to worry about going up to two, three, four, and however many power when you're doing all your wide boosting. But as long as you're mindful, then you have a lot of potential for tons of boosts and even damage with the new acid spray is a lot of fun. So let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against Skoytel here, and we'll go first. All right, so let's get rid of best boy in hand. Don't want to see that. Then don't love Kiki more worker, warrior, whichever one that is. Uh, let's stick with this, then. Glossy need to be a little bit careful that we don't boost our card so highly that that doesn't have a great way to to consume and destroy stuff, because that is one potential anti-synergy that we might have. Aquara gonna lock you? Okay. So be it. In that case, maybe we use you as our early round engine instead.
All right, the heist. It is very powerful. Let's do this. And yes, we had a spontaneous evolution. Let's do that. Although, to be honest, I might have preferred to have gone in the other row since, assuming they play more units, Eater will start to fill this row. And that's not a bad play. It's not bad at all, in fact. Tempted to hide mine here, but let's go. I will do this. I'm just gonna make this very crowded in that row. Um, oh yeah, no, Behemoth is gonna spawn more stuff there, so we definitely didn't need to do that, although we could Chimera there instead. Surprise, see Ah, I mean, you... No, they can't do it on Mata because she's neutral. Okay. Just, uh, just making sure there. Um, this? Oh no, it's too early for you. Um, so it's gonna be this. So we have time to get you out, preferably. Which means we'd like this round to go for at least one more turn, which after the Mata means that's... Apparently not gonna happen. Um... Okay, I guess we'll still pass here. It's a very early pass, and they bricked a very valuable card as well. Though they will get the equity copy in this round. Okay, so we are down a card. As I said, there is an anti-synergy between Glusty and things like Bone Talisman. So, not a huge fan of that. Unfortunately, we kind of have to pick one over the other. Kind of looking for a throwaway here, and it might just be Hive Mind and Hive Mind alone. Because this does give us some carryover value. Don't really care about it. Okay, also ended up in the range row, which is technically not as good. But by having that be the only card we play in this round, that means we're going to get extra value from Hive Mind in round three. So deliberately just going to call it there for round two. So they will win round two. All right, and the game really wants us to get Glusty. Again, it is a really good card for us, but you need to be careful that you don't use it in the same round as Bone Talisman, otherwise you basically need to optimize for one and not the other, which is not really a situation you want to find yourself in. Although, I would have loved to have seen Acid Spray or Geeky More Queen there. Okay, not surprised to see that. That's what we want to play first here. It's probably you. Okay, Skirmisher will damage but not destroy. So why don't we... Spontaneous Evolution to boost you up. And make this wider still. If you do destroy more things, and we actually get another one from the Hive Mind, we might... Okay. It's a little unfortunate, but we have multiple of them. Should have room for the behemoth now. One, two, three. Okay, we definitely have room to spawn more stuff in there now. I think we can go... Uh, that might have been one too many. But I think that was the perfect amount, actually. I technically could destroy you if I were faster, but not a huge fan of the stalker in this event specifically because, in general, anything that has charges is going to be really hard to, to use efficiently with such limited term time. Okay, now let's do Queen. Consume you, because you have high provision costs. Which means you're gonna get a ton of armor and have lots of potential to spawn stuff. Wanna be careful that we still have enough space for Yennefer, but delayed this long enough that I think we should still be okay. Although we do have an Arrakis Nest, which is gonna take up a lot of room. Okay, I think maybe go here, which removes the unit and therefore gets the extra damage, although they had a bunch of armor, so it wasn't super effective. Kind of wanting them to destroy some stuff so that we have a easier way of justifying playing a raucous nest here. Acid spit, what I would give for that right about now. Okay. Uh, I, I don't love it again, but it is technically an option. One, two, three, four, five, six. Means we've... Yep, now the perfect amount of space to play you 
in this row. So that works out fine. We are gonna want to use Yen though, and in fact they've spawned, they've gotten a lot of units out here, so it's not nearly as effective as perhaps it once was. Okay, but that's actually fine. So we basically got all the value we wanted out of you. So let's do this. Then we'll go Chimera on one of these drones, and we'll finish with Bone Talisman. They do not have a lot of armor. Or at least not all of their dwarves had armor, so that actually did limit their value there. Can do this. And don't really have anything we can target with the stalker, so don't want to, because it's going to reduce. Don't want to consume our own cards, because that's going to limit the value of Bone Talisman. That was their last play. They can use the cargoes, but. Okay, that is enough for them to take the lead. We do, of course, sell this Bone Talisman, though, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. So it should be enough for us to take the win here. Now, nah, we shouldn't need to use the Stalker. Because we have outscored them. All right, so going to begin Skellige here. And they'll go first. Okay, so we can go wide with Rockus Nest and Spontaneous Evolution and then boost up with Chimera. Extra power on all that stuff with Hive Mind. Glusty combines well with that. And lots of control here. Okay, maybe we can make this work. I don't love Old Spirit of in hand because we do have Old Spirit of Asleep in our deck somewhere, so that would be preferable to go that route, but so be it. Okay, now if we just spawn, we don't really need to worry about you all that much. So let's go first for a Rockus Nest here. Or even Hive Mind, but ah, we'll do this first. Don't necessarily need to have Hive Mind be a round one situation. Uh, I don't like that. Like, at all. That's, uh, in fact, about as bad as it gets for us. So, yeah, that's that's not good news. We can actually go huge on Best Boy, which is not really what I expected to do, but is theoretically still worth a decent number of points. Now, if they have Tall Removal, we're about to find out, then they could very well use it there. Let's see. They aren't really wide enough to justify many of these other things just yet. And unfortunately, yeah, it's just... Let's go hide mine. And doesn't really matter what order we take them in. So, didn't even have time to choose, so be it this. I imagine they'll have a way to, to answer, though. Leader ability, they will try. Except leader ability for them does not hit armor. So that would have been the most efficient way to get rid of that. Uh, it does, however, mean they'll hit twice with Wild Boar of the Sea. That's probably a finisher they would have liked to have saved. Now they're fairly wide. We could certainly justify a last raid at this stage. And that uh, Ifrit will definitely destroy you now. I'm not really sure why they're using leader ability there, because they just wasted some of the value on Ifrit. So, we could now go melee Yennefer and get actually very solid value here. Or we could do this. Which is also pretty good as well. Flamnica to heal. Can we lacerate? And then we... Destroy. Swalwood Priest. Okay, I see where this has come from. Technically, you put that in the wrong spot, but... Okay, how are we liking the looks of this? Because it's, it's not great. We could Old Spear Tip. That does put us in a slight lead here, although actually with the Swalwood Priest, that's not truly the case. As I said, I was not thrilled about the prospect of playing that anyway. I think we might just pass this one here, because we don't really have the setup for either of you, and nor do we for Chimera either. Didn't have any good targets for Kikimore Warrior to consume, since the hive mind turned all our little drones into bigger stuffs. 
All right, they did play one more card than us in round one, though. So will they try to push or will they dry pass? And if they do, then we could leader ability plus spontaneous evolution. We could Chimera, not the absolute end of the world. And Dragon Queen does work well with Yennefer, although the timing there would get a little bit awkward. All right, it's Eskel. Let's go here and there. Urnachad. Okay. Mm. We do technically still have one thing that can survive that. If we go here. It, not really the way that I wanted that to go, but uh, technically we did still survive. Yennefer is going to become a big problem relatively soon. Let's eat her, so we still have some time to benefit from that. Okay, Freya's Blessing. The question is going to have to be Glusty or Chimera. And slash Yen. I think we go... Let's do Yen here. Plus, technically should have done that first. And we have a big enough lead that I don't think they're even going to be trying to push at all on this turn. Wow. Alright. Um, yeah, sure. This is what Chimera will be for, though. Which should put us in lead with one card to spare here, even after their boosts. So we're fine, we defended the bleed. And now we have one card advantage in round three. But we have Glossy Warp set up, we still have some leader ability charges, so there is certainly that. And not sure to what extent we'll be able to go wide enough to benefit from the Bone Talisman. Yes, the Hatchling does help a bit. Rock is Venom, a little bit risky as well. That helps a lot. Actually, this is a bit of an anti-synergy with Glusty, though. But granted, we're going to get it either way. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, Mantlets. Not entirely sure what to make of that. I'm going to deliberately set this up early so that we have time to still use that last charge, and basically we're optimizing around one of these, but not the other, because they are, as I said, kind of anti-synergistic with one another. So I think maybe we'll optimize Bone Talisman. It does technically spawn a single one power unit. I could also use Hatchling to create one more, so there's at least something for Glusty Warp to do, or not. Okay, not that it matters. Nothing matters. We already are in the lead. We have that one card advantage, as we were saying. So no problem. We've already won. All right, so going up against Northern Realms here. And we'll go first. Okay, we can go wide. We have wide boosting. I don't love Glusty and Bone Talisman in the same round, but we'll, or Arrakis Behemoth, but maybe we'll play these guys round one and save you for a later round. Don't love Old Spirit Tip just because we do have Old Spirit Tip asleep. Granted, I did take a uh, pretty huge risk in mulliganing him, so probably shouldn't have gone to that extreme. But let's begin maybe with Eater. It's the recent rework makes him function quite differently. Okay, now granted, that's unfortunate. Assuming that you do lock him. But we tried to get the engine out early. All right, now let's, uh, in that case, maybe we consume them with you for extra value. Because that's gonna fill the entire room. Kenneth and Gar. 
don't see that very often nowadays, and uh, honestly, we had more spawning capabilities than we were going to have room for, so that works just fine for me. Alright, Redanian Knight. And we could lacerate it just to get rid of the armor and stop it from getting boosted, but I think that's probably overkill. Let's do this. And let's do... I think we have a little more room than this, but... So be it. We'll save our leader ability charges. And we will probably look to Bone Talisman quite soon. Hmm. And that is getting big, but it's certainly still not as big as... Not as many points as we have set up here. So I think yeah, it's a little... Okay, sure, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do one more. Just to get a little more value out of this. And now we're in Chimera range, so we can use that on, really, either row. And obviously, range row is a little more valuable at this point. Geralt's, uh, I mean, a little too late there. So we still got pretty solid value. It's, it's decent, don't get me wrong, but... Got some extra drones out there. Now we can do that, and we have a big enough lead that I think we can pass at this point. Assuming they aren't about to do something else humongous. Uh, Philippa is... it's pretty big. Pretty big. It's still not loving the glusty opportunities here, so I think we will pass. Is it a chance they could catch us? I don't think they will, but with some leader ability charges, they could probably make it happen. I'd argue that's probably not the best idea, though. Boiling oil is definitely insufficient. So I think they're in trouble, because now they're going to have to go two cards down to win round one. And that means they're going to have permanent card disadvantage, which is not really a situation they want to find themselves in. So yeah, they'll win, but at what cost? Alright, so let's get best point back in our deck. And Hive Mind is certainly a nice pickup. In fact, could even use this as a form of carrier, we're assuming they're about to dry pass. So that's a nice opportunity there. Maybe we stick with what the uh, other stuff that we have. Or are they gonna try to go for a miraculous 2-0 push while two cards down? No, okay. So let's do Hive Mind. I don't think the order is gonna matter too much here. Let's go for you first, just because that's gonna immediately come out here. And that's probably the least valuable of the various options. Okay, at least we aren't going to draw into Best Boy, but probably would have preferred to have seen him come out in round three. Okay, and this... this looks decent here. Acid Spit plus Lacerates for a bunch of control. Spontaneous Evolution plus Arrakis Nest and two Kikimore Hatchlings should give us more than enough to flood our rows and Glusty. Should have a lot of potential there as well. Let's get you guys down early, though. Might even put you both in the same row and then use a raucous nest in the other row. As our primary way to spawn in the drones. Okay, that's a little unfortunate, but of course we do have another one. So not the absolute end of the world if the first one gets answered. Alright, you are going to damage that though. Perhaps all the more reason to spontaneous evolution it. That'll give us the worker next and sure, let's spawn another one. So I think this is going to be our primary drone creator for the melee row, and as I said, a raucous nest for this row here. Are still getting the effects of the hive mind, which is why we use that as our throwaway. So that's not bad. We should probably try to acid spit, although unfortunately, they have, uh... They played oh gear, so we really don't want to hit with that. And Vess, I'd like for them to throw some more units somewhere first. Okay, I hate that. I do hate that. Might even... Might even... Old Spirit Tip now. Is this, this has... Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, it doesn't have anything it can go after. It can, uh... Can... Consume one of our cards, which we don't really want to do. Now we can Acid Spit. I'd like to have spawned that in. Okay, that was silly. Sure, I mean, put a... Uh, yeah, we can still destroy you, right? Oh, and I'd like to do this too, if possible. Oh, I forgot, we got this from Hive Mind. Okay. But yeah, it didn't get the boost. It got the shield, sure, but that's not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things. 
Nanika and Range Row, or rather Melee Row instead of Range Row, they're, they're in a lot of trouble here, it would seem. Let's do that. We will have charges. I don't love the Stalker in this event, just because in general, charges are very time-consuming to use. And when you only have eight seconds to take your turn, that is not the easiest thing to make happen. I think it's going to be Lacerate here. Or technically that. To pass that. And then this. And then do some of that. And then finish with Lastly, to really charge Glustine if we have time. Any other soccer charges that we can manage. But I don't really think we're going to need to do that. I mean, I kind of want to see how many points it's worth. So it's, you know, we'll go for it. Even if it's uh, a little overkill. But there you go. Humongous Glusty finisher to seal the deal. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And we'll go first. Okay, and I think I don't love Bone Talisman plus Glusty. That's a tricky combo. Same with Kikimor Queen. Tell you the truth, it's probably not gonna be a Glusty round by the looks of things. All right, guess we will make do with this though. In which case, why don't we begin with Eater? The reworked one is actually a very potent engine nowadays. Garrison. For a sapper? That surprises me quite a bit. They also accidentally hit themselves. Not really sure we have any way to punish them for playing Matic, but... Alright, let's go here. And here. Right, Letho for a second Matic, sure. It's a double Matic deck. Let's get you down here while we still can. Best boy comes out as well. Another sapper. They're gonna accidentally hit themselves again? Not this time. Okay. Maybe. Just a little bit of that. Keep you a little bit safer. Kinda saving all the big stuff at this point. Might still finish with a Glusty after all and save the boosting stuff for a later round by the looks of things, but we'll see. Surely you don't have the unicorn. You do. Play it here, I dare you. I mean, it's going to be random, because your turn has already ended. So we could Glusty here. And I think I will. I think I will. Technically, did have, if we were quicker, time to do that. Try to use that as well, because it might have been our last turn. Huge lead. So we may look to pass on our next turn. I am eyeing that as a potential target for Arrakis Venom or the Slave Driver. I will definitely do that now. Where are you going to banish? Make sure. It's not very good. All right, let's do this because it's decent value here. We'll actually get you out and we'll do this. And I think we are now content with passing. I'd be surprised if they play further. I, you know, it's ambitious. I'll give them that. Ah, that was very good. I did not realize we had such big cars right next to each other. Might have been a little reckless with who I applied the, the boost from, from our strategy. Even with that being said, okay, I'm still gonna pass here. It's a, it's a seven point, okay, granted, it's maybe not quite as big a lead as I would like to see. Heat wave as well. Not bad. Not bad. I would argue they absolutely got away with that. So they did not deserve to win that round, but they won the round nonetheless. Okay, now, are they going to dry pass? They have a lot of carryover for Matic. So they have some late round potential for some tempo. And we used Glusty. And still boost with this. 
Look at Rock's Venom. Maybe we can do better than that now. Okay. And you're gonna get targeted pretty quickly. So, perhaps... That might even be our throwaway here. In normal circumstances, I do really like you as a round starter, but less so here when we know they have a bunch of control with all their bombs. Although, really should have gone hide mine, tell you the truth. That could have given us some nice carryover. Did not think of it quickly enough. Okay. I think Acid Spit on Matic is probably not going to work that well, but... For other cards, it might still be decent. Not sure how much value we're going to get from last rate either. Chimera might be a little bit better. So let's go... Okay, well, now this is probably going to brick. But okay, good. It did actually play in the row that I wanted it to. Hey, Vigo. For another sapper. Well, they're nothing if not predictable. Consistent. They will once again accidentally hit themselves because, I mean, you look at that and you say, well, that looks silly. Why did they do that, Lids? It's because they're trying to use a bunch of plays that take a really long time to use. They're multiple card combos. You just can't afford to do those things in this event. Because if you run out of time on your turn... It's going to target a random card, and we've seen multiple times it's targeted their own units. Like so. I mean, they're not far away from accidentally banishing their own Matic. Alright, let's do this. Sure, throw that in as well while we're at it. Like to get the Acid Spit going, now that we've set up most of our, our drones here. But, don't really have many targets for it. Even if that is a card we'd like to play early, that was well played. Might even go for an Arrakis Nest in this, probably will go for an Arrakis Nest in this row now. In fact, we have two of them, so why not? See, I'm pretty sure, like, when they, obviously when they use the Matic Order ability, the infusion for Acid Spit is going to be lost on that card, so that's why I'm not a huge fan of that. You are very tanky. They've waited a very long time to do that, but sure. Um, now... Oh, should have done this earlier, I think. In hindsight. Want to make sure we don't run out of board space, because we are a little close to doing that. Right, let's go Acid Spit now, and I guess we'll hit you. That arguably might not have been the right play, because as, as we're seeing here, we're going to run out of room pretty quickly, but especially for, I didn't realize we still have an Arrakis Nest. In some ways, we actually want them to destroy some stuff, so we have a little more room to do things here. So I'd like to be able to do this. Alright, sure, we don't really care that much about that, to be honest. I think this is going to be the last return, and it's probably going to be here. And we're just going to Arrakis Nest either melee row, or if they happen to destroy a bunch of stuff, range row. I mean, this Cataclysm may very well destroy some things. That's going to hit you. I'm actually surprised they do have a target for that. Okay, so this is looking like it will be... A melee row. And we have a 13 point lead here, which may or may not be enough. We'll see. They don't have anything good for Red Haze, but it will get the Maddox out. But we will hold on for the two point win. So there's a look at a Monsters Arrakis Swarm deck for the new Battle Rush seasonal event. If you liked the video, then make sure to like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions we should experiment with next. And take a look at our Battle Rush playlist to see previous decks that we've used in this event as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.